Hi everybody, my name is Captain Jay Tarkington. I'm here on behalf of the Heart Research Institute and today we're going to be talking about watersheds using this cool little EcoScape model. This model gives you a great display of a watershed. All of us live somewhere in the watershed. We can start off down here with our bay, lake, or pond, which is where our water collects. Everything from the rest of the town drains that direction. Water flows downhill. As we take a tour of our little town, we can see our residential area. And of course, we even see a new home that's even being under construction. These folks are living the good life up here around the golf course. On the, on the other side of town, we've got more of the industrial area here. This industrial area is where a lot of people work in town. And then we can go down across the river and you'll see the agricultural area over there. We've got some cows and we've got some crops that are about to be plowed. And of course, everybody needs to get around town, so they use obviously the roads and bridges. One of the first types of pollution we want to talk about associated with our watersheds is point source pollution. Point source pollution is any kind of pollution where it comes directly from a source. For example, our little industrial area here on across town. We're going to put some of this on here to simulate some of that industrial pollution that will ultimately work its way out. We've also got, since we've got our residents over here, we've got to have a wastewater treatment plant. So our wastewater treatment plant is actually treating waste there right along the river's edge. And then one of our last sources of point source pollution is manholes and areas along our streets and bridges. Our other type of pollution is non-point source pollution. And it does not come from a particular single source. It's spread around and caused by everything from fertilizer, pesticides, and debris. One of our first types of non-point source pollution is fertilizer. A uh, little goes a long way, so a lot of people many times use way more than they need. We're gonna use this little green powder here to put on. Of course, our golf course, we wanna keep it nice and green, so they're fertilizing. A little bit around our houses over here, because everybody likes a nice green yard. And then, of course, it's used a lot in agriculture. We've gotta make sure we have stuff ready to grow to feed everybody in town, and to make sure our cows have plenty of grass to eat over here. Another form of non-point source pollution is pesticides. And I'm gonna use this little red powder here to symbolize some of our pesticides. Nobody wants any rats, mice, roaches hanging out around their houses, so we use pesticides. Of course, we gotta control for some insects and things out here along the golf course. Over at an industrial area here, we wanna make sure certain things aren't getting into the product, so they use some pesticides there. And also, out here at the farm. Of course, we want to take care of any of the critters that might get in and destroy our new crops. So, a couple of our last two forms of non-point source pollution is various oils that are along our roads and bridges and animal waste. To show some of our areas along our roads, as you drive along, you'll see some oil spots here and there associated with bumps in the road. We're going to put a few of those out there. And then our animal waste. I'm going to use some brown powder here for all our folks walking dogs out here in the neighborhood. So we got a nice little pile there, a nice little pile there. And of course these are not good neighbors because they didn't pick up their trash. And of course associated quite a bit with our livestock area here. All right, now that we've talked about all the sources of point source and non-point source pollution, we're gonna see what happens as it runs down through the watershed. All right, we're gonna start with some of our point source pollution areas. Let's take a look here as our factory starts to 
generate its start and type start to generate its waste. And now we move on to our wastewater treatment plant. These guys are utilizing water to help ultimately clear it up. But when we have an overflow, you can see what happens with that. Definitely coming from the wastewater treatment plant. Lastly, in point source pollution, we've got our storm sewers and manhole covers. And now for the big event, we're going to have some rain. And what we're going to happen is this is going to wash all of our different products down through the watershed and down to our water source. Here comes the rain. Here we go, raining in our industrial area, down across our roads, and down into our agricultural area here. Lots of fertilizer, lots of pesticide, lots of animal waste. And along our streets and bridges, these areas do not absorb water, so it's a significant source of runoff downhill. Some of the things we can do to help prevent episodes like this are using the correct amount of fertilizers and pesticides. We don't want to add excess load down through our watershed. We can very easily pick up after our pets and animals out there, limiting the animal waste. And one other major one we can do is to help maintain our vehicles so they're not dumping oil and other things along our roads and bridges. We all live in a watershed and we depend on it for food, water, and shelter very important that we take care of our individual areas so as this stuff moves downstream it does not have the major effect that we saw in our model today.